This is section 3.3, .3, page 8. So we have a situation here. This is kind of like our U and V problem that we have from uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, that was on page 6, actually. In this case, we have a couple of differentiable functions, f and g of x, and three points of interest, x equals 3, x equals 4. And the table gives us the function values, the derivative values, um, for g of x and f of x. What we're asked to do is to evaluate kind of abstractly at first what the derivative equations would be, and then you substitute in the values from the table and you get a numeric amount. So what we'll do here, let's start with a. We need the derivative of 3 times f of x. Okay, and we actually looked at this uh, before. This is a basically the constant multiple rule. This is just going to equal to 3 times the derivative of the function, so 3 times f prime of x, and we want to evaluate it at x equals 3, so we could write this as 3 times f prime at 3, and then just substitution, 3 times f prime at 3, looking at the top, is equal to 2, so this evaluates to 6. Okay, part B, the rule here, we got f of x minus g of x. So this is just a product, uh, excuse me, a sum or a difference. So actually to get the derivative of those two things together, we can take the derivative of each of them individually. So this derivative would be just simply the derivative of f of x. We're going to denote with f prime of x. Minus the derivative of g of x, we'll denote with g prime of x. Again, this is at x equals 3. So we'll substitute that in, f prime at 3, minus g prime at 3, and we'll go to the table. f prime at 3 is equal to 2, minus g prime at 3, which is equal to negative 1. So minus a negative 1, watch your signs, that is 2 plus 1, or 3. Alright, we'll continue on, part C is asking us to find the derivative of the product of two functions. So on this one, we'll certainly need the product rule. We don't need to worry about where it's at, actually, until we do the, the work here. So the derivative is equal to, using our product rule, the first function, f of x, times the derivative of the second, which we'll denote as g prime of x, plus the second function, g of x, times the derivative of the first, we'll denote with f prime of x. And we're going to evaluate it at 4. So we have f of 4 times g prime at 4 plus g of 4 times f prime at 4. You could actually do your substitutions here even without writing that next line. Just be careful that you're going to the right place. This seems like a simple process to go to the table and pick out the correct value, but it's amazing how easy it is also to make a mistake. So let's see if I can do this. f of 4 is 2. g prime at 4 is negative 2. g of 4 is 1 fourth. f prime of 4 is negative 3. And then evaluate. You get negative 4 minus 3 fourths. Um, and usually for me the best way to do this is to revise this into um, a fraction with 4. So negative 4, 4 is actually negative 16 fourths. So negative 16 fourths minus 3 fourths is negative 19 fourths. Alright. Part D requires the quotient rule. So for the quotient rule, we always start at the bottom. Take the function as is, g of x times the derivative of the top, f prime of x, minus the top function, f of x, times the derivative of the bottom, g prime of x, all over g of x squared. And this time, this is at x equals 3, and I'm, I'm not going to sub in the 3 here. Let's, let's see if we can do it um, without rewriting that next step. So I need row 3 on my table, 
So g of x is pi over 2. f prime of x is 2. Minus f of x of 3 is 4. g prime of x at 3 is negative 1. All over g of x, g at 3 is pi over 2, squared. Let me clean it up a little bit. So let's see. Pi over 2 times 2 is just pi. Minus 4 times minus 1 is positive 4. My denominator then is, um, if I, I, you can kind of distribute that too. It's pi squared over 4. And actually, I, I don't want to write a fraction in a fraction, so I'm going to change this. Pi plus 4 in the numerator. And then I'm going to change this. Instead of divide by pi squared over 4, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 4 over pi squared. Um, so I get 4 times the quantity pi plus 4 all over pi squared. I'm going to leave my answer like that. There's other forms that would also be correct, but that's how I would leave it. Certainly don't leave a compound fraction. All right, we have one more problem. The derivative of 1 divided by g of x. So I can use the quotient rule here. You may already be anticipating that the quotient rule is, is going to be kind of unusual looking. We're going to have some zeros because we just have a constant in the numerator. But I'm going to use the quotient rule anyway, so let's try it. The derivative, we start with the bottom function. The derivative of the top is 0 minus the top function, 1, times the derivative of the bottom, g prime of x, all over g of x quantity squared. And I'm actually going to work this way because I want to show an alternate solution to this one. Um, actually, this whole first piece goes to 0. So I have what? Um, minus g prime of x all over g of x quantity squared. So um, x equals 4, so I'm on the second row. g prime of x is negative 2, so I got minus negative 2 over g of 4 is 1 fourth quantity squared. So that gives me 2 over 1 16th. So in the same method I used on the last problem, this is the same. 2 divided by 1 16th is the same as 2 times 16. So this equals 32. Actually, what we could have done, actually, we don't know this technique yet, so never mind. I'm just going to leave it at that. We're going to learn another technique in a later section that will help us do that. Um, basically, I'll go ahead and show you since I brought it up. It's basically this form. Um, the derivative of that to the negative first power, right? So that would be another way to write that at x equals 4. Um, haven't really learned how to do that yet, so I'm, I'm going to hold on that.